So yes, I thought I'd talk tonight about the relation between Mike Kelly's work and comedy and humor. For comedy and humor and their numberless progeny, their liaisons, their affiliations, parody, irony, satire, black and blue humor, farce, wordplay, and more, are essential and defining, I think, to the intergeneric projects of Mike Kelly, his compulsively diverse work in performance, installation, sculpture, painting, video, and writing, as they are to any artist of the current generation. Kelly's comedic commitments are immediately apparent in his critical and creative writings in all their idioms, even with the most straightforward. Beginning way back with Ajax from 1984, a quote, playful attempt to engage with issues of readership in relation to my writings for performance, which were purposefully ambiguous. Kelly's texts are saturated with humor and irony arising from the many gaps and dissonances he builds into his willfully faulty structures. In the image text combos, for example, with their in image titles and facetious commentaries, the text might mimic the work or operate as another, quote, figure in a visual proposition, offering new layers of meaning that mediate often unstably between, in Kelly's terms, jokes, red herrings, and real issues. The compounding of textuality with, or as a supplement to, the visual image is part of Kelly's plea for scrutiny, the kind of close but open reading that punctures the social veneer and probes underneath his rearrangements of mass culture. There is then both a literal and a figurative side to Kelly's central, ironic, comedic strategy of playing with, quote, figures of speech. Now, humor in Kelly's work is also a function of his wider view of art as a byproduct of repression. Part of the humor in my work, he said, is about making that obvious. In Kelly's writings, repression is identified with histories and reputations passed over or suppressed by the critical status quo, including those of David Aspidol, Paul Tech. See here, this is Meat Piece with Warhol Grillo Box from 1965 from the series Technological Reliquaries, or his friend, colleague, fellow artist John Miller. This is Miller's Untitled from 1990. Now, Kelly's revisionism crackles with irony as he re-engages with what he views as omissions or misrepresentations in the historical record. In addition, humor and irony are necessarily caught up in another conceptual focus of Kelly's work and aesthetic as a whole, his proposition that art is crucially connected to ritual and that one measure of its power and success is founded on what he termed a, quote, structural analysis of the poetics of ritual. Some of Kelly's most black and outrageous humor is played out in the four recovered memories for the project titled Timeless Authorless, which were apportioned across a series of 15 black and white photo texts in the form of newspaper articles first shown in the exhibition toward a utopian art complex at Metro Pictures in New York in 1995. Written from the point of view of putatively fictive victims of probably delusional abuse, their disquieting themes include rape, torture, abduction, incarceration, and incest. Depending for their effect, on subtle moments of believability and clearly drawing on the style of Kelly's scripts and monologues, these pieces are among the most fantastic, provocative, and disturbing of all Kelly's writings. 
they also reveal his dependence on the written word for the delivery, sustenance, and plausibility of what we might call imaginative extremism. For it would be almost impossible, I think, to deploy the contradictory impulses that play through these narratives, which are horrific, perverse, and darkly humorous all at once, in any conventional visual media. Of course, all this is rendered even more shocking and perhaps effective when one realizes that the foretext here, derived from a bout of auto-analysis, as Kelly quote, used self-help books to determine his pathological psychology. I just plug my background into the standard dysfunctional schemas. One of the hallmarks of Kelly's tireless comedic repurposing of repressed energy is his uncanny capacity to elicit humorous effects from almost any object discourse or situation. His interests embrace more conventional or traditional comic vehicles, such as caricature, which he discussed in his essay, Foul Affection, Thoughts on Caricature, from 1989. This is Kelly's, uh, the enlarged head of caricature is like the enlarged head of a fetus from the sublime from 1984. And this, uh, one of the illustrations in uh, the collected writings from Basil Wolverton, untitled 1973, which appeared in Wolverton's gallery of goony gags, which uh, Kelly uh, again discusses in the essay that titles the first of his volumes of collected writings, Foul Perfection. His use of traditional comic vehicles also includes comic books, humor magazines, and TV cartoons, which he's taken up in numerous projects, including, I think most obviously, um, in projects like Candor Con from 2000, which you see here, and the more recent updating of this project at the Oblonka Gallery in Berlin uh, at the end of last year, just called Candors, uh, which you see on screen. Both of these offer extrapolations of the comic hero Superman's home of Candor, the capital of Krypton. Kelly also discussed the role of comic strip imagery as it was played out in the work of his fellow artists, including Douglas Hubler and Eugen Faustrom. This on screen is Hubler's Crocodile Tears, Howard, from 1984, a segment from a conceptual comic strip that appeared in the Los Angeles Weekly between June the 29th and August the 30th, 1984. And this is a, a work from Oden 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 Frost Faust. These traditional interests also embrace physical comedy, as in Keller's self-performance as the banana man. See here, this is an undated image, but it dates to the early 1980s. Um, it includes, frankly, banal and kitschy adolescent humor, as in the so-called folding game with the Indian maiden from the Land of Lakes butter package. You can clearly see what's going on here. The adolescent boy takes several folds in the butter pack at the knees of the maiden become breasts when uh, folded in a certain way, something that gives great delight to the 12-year-old imagination, anyway, in America. They also include smutty, sexist, and scatological jokes. Court, from 1982, acrylic on paper, or even more pruriently, they could get worse, but I self-censored this work from the loading dock drawings from 1984. Um, and 